So welcome everyone. Good evening on this Tuesday evening, the 26th of January. I'm Elizabeth Padilla and this is Harsha Pali. And tonight's topic is the secret or the quiet actually power of introversion. So I don't know if you've thought about that before. So today we're going to explore how and why introversion is a power and how we can gain resilience, stability, and security by practicing introversion. So first, let's start with a meditation and, and okay. So I think you need more light actually because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's grainy it's trying to get yeah that's better Thanks. actually it was okay where it was for him for brother okay so let's take an huh? okay excuse us for a moment here Okay, wonderful. So welcome everyone. So let's take a nice deep breath in and have some time to relax, to let go, to meditate. Become aware of sounds, perhaps the lighting in the room, or even thoughts and feelings that run across your mind. How am I feeling right now? I check in to the body, relaxing any tension, loosening the neck or the jaw, the shoulders, just melting into my chair. Whatever sounds that may be going on in the room or beyond the walls, I use it as part of my meditation. I am conscient energy in this physical body. I'm aware of even being aware. I'm aware of my own presence. I let go of the day. And yesterday, I'm just aware of this moment and the breath. This body is alive breathing, 
flowing energy and I, the soul, am aware, experiencing the world around me through this body. And I take this moment to appreciate and accept whatever's happening right now in my life, just acceptance. In this world, there's a constant change, a constant flow, and I allow it to be as it is, accepting the shifts and moves and cycles of life. And also being aware of myself as a spiritual being, as an eternal, conscient energy of light. I experience my eternal state, my original state of peace. I listen to the stillness I'm receptive to the calm. And I surrender to the tranquility. I am a peaceful soul. The soul is empowered by the peace and the stillness The soul's energy is restored. And I come back into the awareness of the body and the room where I'm sitting. as the observer, but I carry with me that experience of peace, calm, and resilience. Om Shanti.
Thank you. Om Shanti means be in peace. I am peace. And welcome for those of you who have just come on. We just now had a meditation with a commentary. And again, my name is Elizabeth Padilla. I'll be moderating and sharing this evening. And we're also invited uh, Harsha Pali with us. He's a resident brother here at the San Francisco Center. And I'm a resident um, at the Anabuti Meditation and Retreat Center in Novato. And we get to be here together to, to share this uh, interesting, quiet power of introversion. Now, I was sharing with Brother Harsha that naturally um, I'm more of an extrovert. And I, I shared with, with Harsha that I felt he was more naturally a, an introvert. And um, I thought it would be interesting for us to share from our own experience how practicing introversion um, has, um, well, I don't wanna put any adjectives to it. I'll leave that to the one sharing, but how it has changed um, you know, our practice and how we live and how we see things. So would you like to start off and share your experience or some, perhaps maybe some, uh, a story or something that's happened to you as you started to practice introversion? Sure. Um, I'm just trying to tap into my memory lane <laughs> when I started this journey. <clears throat> so I remember when uh, growing up, I was uh, always an introvert. Uh, I am the youngest of uh, five children in the house and uh, um, and my siblings, my brother, elder brother, who is just two, hours, two years uh, elder to me, and my sister, four years elder to me. The, I'm around like four or five years old. So they're happily running around, playing around. My mom always used to say, go and play with them. I never had uh, that uh, zeal to go and then run around, play around. I always used to sit in one corner and just sit in one corner and just think about things. And I used to think about something deeper things and uh, not so pleasant things always. Like I always used to think about why the world is like this. What is the way, what is the right way? What should we do? What should we not do? So that everyone can stay at peace and, um, and safe. And, and happy life, normal, happy life. And that is what I used to think at five years old. And uh, I shared earlier too, that at that time, I won't, I don't know, is it a depression or is it anxiety or is it a, what anxiety for five, four or five years old kid? Mm -hmm. So, so, but the thought, the very thought, what I was thinking at that time, reflecting back, is it is not just uh, one incident, it is the whole state of mind which was totally absorbed in that heavy feeling. And uh, one day, I mean, you know, things happen in spiritual path, uh, mystically things start happening. And one of the things that happened is I was in a temple and uh, outside the temple, there was a Brahma Kumari's booth when I was like six, seven years old. And uh, I, now I'm connecting the dots. At that time, I didn't know why I felt that way. I had this deep sense of serenity as if I, I touched that part, which is always pure, always safe. It, is, it, it felt as if all the heaviness on my chest, heaviness on my head is lifted off. 
and i caught myself having that shift of awareness what happened now what what just happened and it it just shifted literally lit in heaviness just lifted off and uh, and another incident is when i uh when i was in india i was uh, uh i got through my college and then i got into uh, my job and uh, it was a decent job and uh, i was not happy and then i just came to us i started working in I- ibm and uh, things like that and uh, but i was not happy and once you come to us things get more obvious uh, uh, compared to being in india because in india you have uh, uh, that cultural support that family support uh, you know the sequence of events that happen like festivals and every month every 2 3 weeks there is some festival f- family get together something that keeps you engaging and uh, going and once you come here every day is another day no difference and i think that had a toll over a period of time and that again that childhood heaviness started coming back mm-hmm. and that's when i really started uh, thinking about and uh, trying out different meditations and uh, uh, in hinduism there is like chanting and gayatri mantra and all of this stuff i started doing all those stuff but uh, um when i came to anubhuti first time around 2000 Three, four, yeah, I time. remember. Two thousand four. Four, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, I felt something different, something lighter. I was, I was trying different ways to engage. Volunteering is one part which I wanted to work on. Uh, I like hikes and nature. Spend time in the nature. so i was looking for volunteer opportunities and that's when janardan bhai was there he was my colleague at work uh, and then he moved here at that time or not actually he he didn't move yeah he came for some retreat with uh, dadi gulzar and uh, so he met and then he told like yes come here and then and then when he moved here that's when i came back here I came to visit anyhow so my i when i came to anubhuti i came to just volunteer mm-hmm. like for the service or whatever mm-hmm. and i felt little different and uh, i know there we meditate so i remember i used to join the 4 o'clock meditations when i used to come for fridays and i haven't taken course or any of four in the morning four oh, yeah first day when i came i came for amritvela Really? Yes. I okay. came on Saturday. And Saturday I came on my motorbike and Hema Ben said like do you have any family and kids? Where do you have to go? And she like I have nowhere to go. <laughs> she said like stay here. And I lived there. I stayed there <laughs> since the same day I went there. <laughs> and then I know uh, we meditate uh, early in the morning and then I wanted to if you remember before the the quarters on above the office there used to be big uh, glass doors right uh, i used to sleep next to that glass door i used to look at the stars and then i used to sleep under the stars i mean glass doors are still there i remember that day and then i said like yeah it's so pleasant and peaceful and then i used to join at 4 o'clock at that time and then uh, and then followed by that is sunday and there is avyak murli and i used to join after a few weeks or few months i guess few weeks when balwant bai came that's when uh, uh, he asked something to do with 5000 years and shivaratri was coming at that time some 5000 years came into picture so like, what is this 5000 years where did this come from <laughs> then they realized oh you didn't take the course <laughs> great <laughs> then i took back to back with kirit by course and oh wonderful <laughs> oh but uh, so, so when you but when you said um cuz i mean wow to just kind of come into our daily routine and you and that was based on what i'm hearing you say a couple times and that was i felt different can i ask you know what how did you feel different what was it that it must have to compel you draw you 
to the practice without knowing any knowledge, you know, I mm. mean, basically. Um, I mean, growing up, uh, early morning meditations is part of our daily routine. Okay. Yeah. You have a very religious family. Yeah. Kind I mean, of, your dad, yeah. I mean, he was very much into Vedanta, right? Right. And yeah. the Ramakrishna. Yeah. So he used to wake, I mean, my grandfather is very much a four o'clock person and he's not just a four o'clock. He wants everyone to be a four o'clock person. <laughs> okay. All right. So you were just at home then. Okay. All right. So growing up whenever in the summer vacation, when I go to India, so my yeah. grandfather, you, you just don't wake up at four. You take shower at four o'clock and then you go to a temple and then we do Gita reading, Bhagavad Gita at 4 a.m. And then we do a thing and then we'll go to farm. It's a nice walk to the farm. And uh, uh, this is every day. Every day, most most of the days, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it, it was nice. It, it's a nice childhood memories. And my grandfather is very serious, very strict <laughs> in his routine. And uh, mm -hmm. okay. I, I think that experience childhood experience when I came back and other thing is when you see a contrast right contrast is how you are feeling at work all other things going on when you come here you feel a little calmer which is pleasant you you feel at home you feel good if it feels good you want to do it so mm -hmm. you don't know it is spiritual or something deeper or something it felt good so I said like oh this is felt good let me do one more take like Macy Bai says, like if it feels good one day, do no, another day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I started like that. And then, uh, so most of the weekends I used to come there, but uh, but how does introversion feels like? It feels a place where there is no disturbance. It feels a place where there is no thought, but there is no heaviness either. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is nothing to analyze, but you are happy happy means it's not like bubbly joyful that kind of stuff you feel uh, lighter you feel lighter and uh, and pleasant mm -hmm. a sense of contentment um, if you put a meter that degree will start raising that sense of contentment yeah. will be growing <laughs> you feel little full stable and pleasant mm -hmm. pleasantly content and stable yeah i can relate to that um, I mean, I had a similar experience, although I was raised um, Catholic, Christian Catholic. When I was five, we went to visit a convent and, you know, they wore the full long um, habit and it was traditional convent and the vibrations there and just the cleanliness and they were uh, oriented around the Mother Mary and when I saw that statue and it was just so pure, so calm. And I, I'm only five years old. And I told the nuns that were showing us around and my parents, I said, I want to be a nun when I grow up. <laughs> and of course they laughed at me because I'm only five years old, but I remember feeling quite indignant. Like, well, what, you know, why not? I, yeah. <laughs> What's wrong? You? you know, I'm, you know, you have to take me serious. <laughs> um, but then, of course, as you get older, you start to get caught up in your career mm. and, you know, going to school. And um, when I was, I was working and I was successful, but I said, this isn't it. Mm. I mean, the adrenaline rush and everything and um get you know it it was a wonderful but inside something was nagging and so then i took a little sabbatical mm -hmm. you know i took time off i took almost a year and i went traveling and um i was searching and one of my uh friends told me about the brahma kumaris and um this was in 84 five and so we had just the brahma kumaris in san francisco was just this uh flat on clement street and so at that time 
I never met anyone from India. The Bay Area was not into, you know, it was an internet, to, you know, mm. the computer world hadn't blossomed yet. I mean, it was just getting revved up for, to explode in the late eighties. Um, but um, so there was this sister at the top of the stairs, Sister Gita actually. And I remember going, oh my goodness, what have I done? But there was something, like you said, a mystical kind of experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm not like a, I don't have visions really. I don't, I'm not too impressed by all of that. For me, I want proof. I want, like, what can you do with that? If you had a vision, how can you help people? If you are good at something, how does that help the world? So for me, that's what I'm inspired by. Mm. So there I am at the bottom of the stairs and something in me said, I've got to start somewhere. And I felt like this big, you know, push up the stairs. And I sat with her and after five minutes, similar kind of experience, just sitting with her, so simple. I could feel that she was not inundated by waste thoughts. Her mind was so calm and clear. And I was so drawn by that. And I said, I want to be like her. I want to be able to do the same thing, to meditate like that. And so that's what started me on that journey. And I, I guess probably what happened was I'm so used to producing and being on stage and performing and being this and being that and proving myself and all external, external, external inside. Actually, I'm realizing as I'm even sharing here, the, the spirit, that enthusiastic, you know, joy for life was squelching and getting tinier and smaller and just suffocating in this world of, of um, extroversion and look at me. And um, it just seemed, at least probably that's how I was handling it, you know, being uh, from a more self-centered kind of mentality and then opening up to a whole world of stillness and calm and getting to know oneself and being happy with oneself. And I just, everything changed. Everything just shifted. And I, um, a whole world opened up and it felt familiar. It didn't feel foreign. It felt like me. As a matter of fact, it felt like even more like me. Um, and mm -hmm. so I had to go for that. And I could tell that there was no charge for the class. I could feel it, but I thought, oh, let me just ask, is there any fee for this meditation class? And I wasn't surprised by her answer, you know? And she said, oh, uh, just give up your, your anger and your greed and attachment, <laughs> that, that's the fee. And um, I, you know, I just thought that was a cute answer, but I knew that I could feel that it was an altruistic kind of atmosphere that I felt familiar to me and I felt at home with. And so whatever it is that you do donate or give, it comes from your heart. You know, it's not compulsion. So this journey of introversion has basically opened my heart. And recently I would say, even though after this many years, what I'm learning is to be more receptive, mm -hmm. you know, and how to listen to the other and step back and just trust that there's a synchronicity at work and be sensitive to that so that you can help facilitate it instead of resist that mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm and you're trying to manage it, manipulate it, oh, it should be like this, when really this, this is a gift, something is happening and it may not be to your liking or it may be uncomfortable or because you have to learn something new. Um, 
but to go with it. And when I, every time I stand back, I go within, I become still, then the insights come. I could tell you countless stories um, of even being upset and um, distraught by things that are happening in the world. You know, um, you know, just seeing democracy being, you know, just obliterated and, um, uh, you know, that, that just like, is such a passion for me. And then to get really quiet, really still and understand that it's part of the evolution and to ride that evolution, ride that wave. Um, I mean, I could be specific, but I wanna run on to the next question actually. Um, no, you can continue with that. Well, okay. Basically, I mean, you might have heard me talk about this and it was just um, for me um, four years ago when I saw who was running for president. And for me, I like to see someone who is virtuous and um, equal rights and um, upholds the constitution and all of this. I didn't realize how, um, how much democracy meant to me. And um, I remember being so upset about it. And I, I sat in the meditation room and I just um, got really quiet, really still. And then I, a th new thought came and that was, this is exactly what has to happen. Sort of the fly in the ointment that America needs to wake up and I even beforehand, because, you know, two th before 2008, things were going so well in America, right? And you were sharing that with me. And I mean, the economy and so on. And then it had that big shift in 2008. But I remember thinking, gosh, don't they see what they're doing? Why is the world asleep? Because we get comfortable uh, with our lifestyle. And then we don't realize um, that it could be at the expense of others, my lifestyle. And uh, so I realized in that moment in the meditation room that there has to be a disturbance sometimes to wake things up. And not only did it wake up a country, it was a global wake up. So that was my understanding. And mm. so introversion allows me to be stable on events, mm. allows me to see the synchronicity mm. and also to be resilient and at my best form mm. so that I'm performing. Um, so I don't know if, and also if you have, if anyone has any questions that you yeah, can put it I in the chat. Um, you're most welcome um, if anything uh, develops as we share here. And um, what is introversion actually? You know, are we talking about the same thing? You know, yeah. what is that? Do you, can you? <laughs> so first thing when I f first came to US, uh, introversion was uh, not a virtue. <laughs> Yeah, introversion. I mean, even in India, they said like, "Hey, you can't be introverted. You have to be extroverted. You have to go out, oh, meet really? people." Oh, that that is the image that they see. Have I got to... the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> in India, at least, they train yeah. us because yeah. they say like, "Hey, you have to meet your clients. You have to to impress them, and you have to go out. To, you have to start your pep talk, whatever that thing is, right?" They say that is part of your communication skills. So, so introversion in in a spiritual in, context in indian oh in india indian? Uh, in the corporate world in india they say like if you're introverted uh, you lose your opportunities in career <laughs> in a way Interesting. so in other words you're very closed and you are in your own world you're not opening up you're not sharing you're not mingling with people uh, that is the image but for a corporate to grow, you have to meet people, you have to share ideas, you have to market yourself, you have to put yourself out there more and all of that stuff. And then, and then most of the time in Indians, they have that problem too. So they don't, they have great ideas, but they don't know how to present themselves. 
there are two things the one is how you present yourself is another thing but going out and meeting and all of the stuff that's where they always associate introversion as not a, a thing that you want to present yourself as so so but i know i'm an, i was an introvert and uh, i lost a lot of career opportunities on that but i line. trust <laughs> introverts i don't know there's something i really yeah, it's more about gravitate. east and west <laughs> maybe it's because you know i tended to be an extrovert you know but so and other thing uh, other uh, notion that is connected with introverts is like they are lonely they are uh, they are they are loners and they don't want to meet people most of the time they associate that with loneliness and uh, if you are introvert if you are lonely you go into depression you are going to wrong direction don't be introvert mm-hmm. so that is a whole image that was given mm-hmm. for introversion mm-hmm. but spirituality gives a whole new version of introversion it is exactly opposite if you look at uh, behind the hood what is actually happening behind the veil mm-hmm. what's happening in your mind what's happening in your emotional state and loneliness people look at you as an introvert but that loneliness is taking you to a darker side spiritual introversion will is taking you into more light lightness and then you feel more lighter you feel more powerful you feel more composed you you more connected more connected and you can listen to other person beyond obvious like you you can see through the words you can see through what they are trying to sell and you can see what is actual need so when you are really introverted that is when the real communication actually happens that's key yeah you, you, when you said you can see you can actually see the need yeah you're being receptive to the others right. needs and they can feel it if you really if you really just listen to someone you've cured the issue you know maybe 70% i'm just made up the percentage but um at least 50 um because people can figure it out for themselves whatever the issue or problem is just mm. by listening yeah and even to listen you need to have a lot of inner silence right mm-hmm. i should not be judgmental yeah. i should not be making a comment on what you're trying to say in my mind maybe i may not be opening my, my mouth but in my mind i should not be judgmental mm. i i should hear you as it is and then see through where it is so for for that my mind has to be so silent and my heart the feeling part of me should be very active mm-hmm. and tune into your feeling part and that's needs a lot of silence to your mind mm-hmm. and that's how i can really hear what you're trying to say mm-hmm. you're not just saying some words no. but you're trying to convey content. some content and then behind that there is a need and what is that i'm trying to respond to i'm not responding to your words mm-hmm. words to words will just increase more sound Mm-hmm. and if i am responding to your feeling and uh, if i understand your concept and when whatever i am saying we are moving forward in your communication for example even in tech- yeah they'll want to listen to you they'll yeah. be receptive to what you have to say yeah and 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 then other thing is if somebody is saying something and then you accept it you listen to it and then your response is building on what they have already said yeah. so they feel that yes you acknowledge and you're responding to that and then there is this communication that is happening which is more productive mm-hmm. not just at the exchange of ideas or stuff but if you or to prove yourself if you if you aren't clear and you have an agenda then it's like as if you're trying to you know well i see it this way mm. you know oops mm. you know um so i will be clean and clear and listening taking it in and then oh well maybe it should be like this then you're really going to say something that's going to be helpful mm. and that conversation will be more productive in a way they feel this time i spent with that person 
I'm, I, I'm not only feeling good, but I'm also making a progress in whatever it is. Like if I am stepping into a conversation with an intention of uh, sharing my ideas and then and making that idea into a product. So if I'm very quiet and silent in my mind and I'm just listening through and I can totally absorb where they are coming from and I can totally relate to what is the benefit that is going to bring and I can hear what is that they are putting to. And then we can, when I put my, my thoughts, it is complementing each other and then making a productive decision out of it. So, so that is one level. And then other level is most of the time we experience, our life is filled with experience. Mm -hmm. And in order to have a pleasant experiences, I need to understand the need of the other person need what needs people need or the intention yeah it, it may not even be maybe they want to help that's right so i always see that there is always love which is driving mm. right so what version of love are they point sharing and for me the one which i'm working right now is accepting love wow did you catch that so Harsha was saying that he's working on catching love. What do you mean catching love? Like catching power for? Yeah. So in a, in a way, like if you see where they are coming from and you can see they're trying to share something, sharing always is driven out of love. So if my attention is falling on that, I need to accept. Mm -hmm. when, 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 when somebody accepts your love, they feel loved. Right. And if you, if I not paying attention to what is coming towards me, in a way, even though I don't have any negative intention, it goes out as a rejection of love. They have presented something pleasant. That's so Even true. though I didn't pay attention, mm. it, it, the message that goes back to the person who is sharing towards you is a rejection of their love and that itself hurts yes so how does introversion come in introversion helps to what is that coming towards me okay <laughs> and accepting that it feels good for me and at the same time accepting that mm -hmm. when i feel good i respond to what i feel good what i'm feeling is what mm -hmm. I'm going to share how I feel about that person, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So I like this quote by Churchill, I think like, people feel what you feel for them. People, people feel, feel what, what you, you feel for feel them. For them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and people remember how you make them feel. They don't remember what you do for them. They don't That's... remember how many projects you did. They don't even, you remember some of the great ideas we might have shared, but they remember how you, how you make them feel. Mm -hmm. So genuinely, if I want to make other person feel good, I need to feel for them. They are sharing something. In other words, everyone needs love. Say if they're opening their heart, in a different way they're trying to mm -hmm. share that mm -hmm. pay attention to me, right? Mm -hmm. So they're asking for love. That itself mm -hmm. is love because I'm opening my heart towards you because I trust you, you help me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that it, it itself is a version of love, opening yourself for fulfilling it's the need. Love in action. Love in action, mm -hmm. right? And if I respond to that, they feel it mm -hmm. and I cannot fake it. <laughs> that is oh, you can't thing. fake it? You can't <laughs> fake love? <laughs> no. So you yeah. have to feel mm -hmm. first, unless I accept that love, and unless I take that honor and then hold that presence, mm. then, then that presence itself will respond back either through my body language, either through my tone or that's so nice for that mm -hmm. i need to be very comfortable with the love that is coming i need to take it in i need to mm -hmm. sit still <laughs> you and that means comfortable with with myself and i might have my own uh, 
uh, shortcomings. I mean, have my own uh, insecurities. That what are you trying to tell me? Right. That kind of stuff. Well, where's this? What, if, if what do you? Yeah, you what, can you can tell. What do you want can't from you? Me? <laughs> yeah. Well, what what's good? Yeah. So I need to be attentive of what's going on inside. First, I need to make peace with myself, and then when I'm in at that's where introversion comes into picture working on yourself to go into a pleasant place when mm. you are at pleasant place you're not insecure you're safe with yourself and then you open up isn't that nice working on yourself to come to a pleasant place with yourself so that you can be receptive to others and meet you in that pleasant place that's lovely um, so now uh, the question I have is um, why now it's quoted that introversion is actually a quiet superpower. And we have some questions. Maybe I better read the question before we go on to another question. And um, how do uh, sit back and let life unfold? Uh, my tendency is to jump in and control the situation. And sometimes you need to. And the power of introversion will help me know the difference when it's time to pull back and when it's time to hold the reins and, or the steering wheel, um, when it's time to put on the accelerator or when it's time to put on the brake. So uh, to answer this question, it would be a personal solution for you and I know for me, I had to do the practice to, to be with myself and be at home with myself, to listen to what my needs are and then begin to um, uh, navigate, I would say, and listen to the needs that are out there. Um, and when I fulfill my own personal needs, then I feel that I'm able to have something to offer. There'll be a flow. When there's service, when you're offering something, there'll be a flow, a rapport with that, with the other. And um, even at work, they'll feel that they can count on you because you're listening to the bigger picture. You're listening to the, 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 the good of the whole. So if there is a tendency to want to jump in and control, I would think that would be maybe because you're afraid or fear or not trust outcomes. So how would you develop that? How mm -hmm. would you develop that? For me, uh, when is, this is a- uh, Kopna. Really for me also. Good. That's also for you? <laughs> okay. So in other words, I have that tendency, like we do a program called DISC where it is like, what personality trait are you? This is, uh, Oh, I don't you, know this. Uh, uh. It's a corporate thing, like personality. Oh, thing. a chart. Yeah, they yeah. do that sometimes. Yeah. Some kind of a I think, assessment, uh, yeah. personality type. Are, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you a people person? Are you a task person? Are you, uh, do you play safe or do you take risk mm -hmm. to? A resource person. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so anyhow, so when we did this, I realized something about myself that I jump in, I'm more of a task person. So, <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> so here's one sitting here. Perfect. <laughs> so I need to jump in and get solve the problem. So that's how. And um, for that, I realized uh, there are two things that are working. When I become introverted, uh, introverted doesn't mean that everything is pleasant already. When you're introverted, you're looking what's going on inside. That is the first step. So one of the things I found myself is there are two things that is happening. Mm -hmm. Why am I doing that? Okay. One thing is uh, there is something at hand. Mm -hmm. You got to get it through. Right. Okay. Right. So that is one thing. Another thing is when you do something, you feel good. Yeah, there's an, a, a rush of some kind or yeah. adrenaline. Yeah, when you complete something, you feel good. Okay. Right, And then there is a sense of kick that comes with, okay, I did this, 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 mm -hmm. this, right? Mm -hmm. So the other thing is, if I don't do it, it sticks in my mind, it keeps running around on, 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 and on. It's not done, it's not done, it's not done. 
right it's mm-hmm. bugging mm-hmm. either it is making you feel good either it is not making you feel good okay in no way my attention is always on the task <laughs> mm. what it is doing to me right so what i learned is how do i because there are million things mm-hmm. and, and it will never end mm mm-hmm. that is a reality so how do you satisfy ha ah. so that is where when i realize that hmm so i am caught up in a uh, what do you call uh, cycle or hamster wheel hamster wheel <laughs> <laughs> you walk ahead the momentum builds it won't just stay right it, it won't say in the same moment but you start that wheel it's the it's, momentum picks up the uh, yeah uh uh-huh. it picks up the momentum it won't mm-hmm. slow down <laughs> Mm-hmm. or it won't be in the same state either it just picks up you can do one it picks up the momentum but you got to do what you got to do but the if i start taking a rush out of doing and i'll get caught up in the emotions of doing if i am not getting that i'll push somebody else to get things done <laughs> so you will be stuck in that uh, uh, kick that you get by doing 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 right and it is not just the head it is the feeling part also you feel good you feel good you feel good right and then you want to keep it going and it's a hamster wheel mm-hmm. and it, it's a lot of wear and tear on mm-hmm. yourself it sure is and uh, introversion is stepping out of that wheel and then seeing what needs to be done you got to do you got to do mm-hmm. right but your heart is not totally into it totally into it means you're not dependent on it mm-hmm. right you got to do you got to do but your heart should be connected to something which makes you feel good okay which is right thing okay okay right? so i am working being a task oriented person i'm trying to when i become introverted it gives me attention to you know what people matter tasks are for the people <laughs> okay beautiful <laughs> Beautiful. not people are for the tasks <laughs> i hope that answer helps answer that one um and then of course the offering was for me introversion is being self aware and reflective and um when i interact another person's saying when i interact with people with the intention to serve huh mm. that's you oh mm. tanuj that's you i feel that my interactions are more elevated and i can practice to serve others i must be introverted so that i can be a good listener so tanu- mm. tanuj is um doing our technical uh part of this uh wonderful zoom meeting and he i think you're also introverted by nature no are you extroverted i haven't seen that side of you yet mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay so wonderful and then here we have john saying tasks are for the people i like that that what you're doing is for people That's people wonderful. are not yeah we always say people are the resource yeah resource to do what to get this project done yeah who are the resources people <laughs> hr human mm-hmm. resources human resources humans are not resources humans are the reason why these resources are there yes <laughs> so <laughs> so put people ahead i mean that is what i am working on myself i am i i can't claim that i am there but that helps me to become more introverted mm-hmm. it helps me to what really matters and that that takes me more closer to what is the point of living Mm-hmm. and then my boss always says the people don't remember how many projects he completed <laughs> really people my what boss what did your boss said that oh yeah did because, they also, but and then what was the punchline and then what did they remember like, build relationship build relationship oh good build boss relationship good to have a boss <laughs> like that so then okay so now coming back to that question of uh introversion it's a quiet thing it's a personal journey However, we've been sharing here how it shows up and has an impact. So, how is it that introversion is a quiet superpower? Mm-hmm. That it's actually a, a strength. So, mm-hmm. how is introversion uh, a power? Mm-hmm. I could offer yeah, something um that's come up for me and 
Um, again, you know, especially lately being more uh, receptive um, and not react. Usually I think I've got the answer. You know, my ego will say, oh yeah, I got this. But now I'm taking a few breaths and maybe even a few hours um, to just sit with things, which is not my usual uh, mode of operation. Um, and I'm so glad even recently something came up and I, I journaled it, what my thoughts were about it and what I thought I could see the direction where I was going with this situation, which is quite important. And I'm glad I got it out. I got my thoughts all out and then I waited and then I got another piece of information that was so critical. And if I had gone on this tangent, tangent, yes. And because I had it written out, I went, oh, that's where you were an hour ago. Interesting. And then I waited, let things kind of settle. And then I got another piece of information that allowed me to see it in a whole different way. So for me, introversion has space, it has fullness, it has inclusivity. It's not alone, it's not separation, it's inclusive. When I'm in touch with my own spiritual sense, my eternal sense, like love, you know, tapping into that, or even my peace of mind, or even joy, you know, enthusiasm, that in, introversion allows me to go to that really, um, I like this word, sweet spot, where it all begins. And then once you tap in, you'll start be more receptive to where others are, where, where their joy begins, and identify that and your vision here from the power of introversion, the way you see the world, like brother Mario, he would do this. This was natural for him. Uh, he's a dear, dear, dear um, brother. He passed away some years ago, but even my own family, my brothers and sisters and uh, my dad, especially when he passed away, they just missed him so much. I didn't realize what an impact that this soul had on my family. Mm. Um, and that was, he was a good listener and he was happy with himself. He was comfortable with himself and he had room for others and he could respond to the other. So in a way, and he was, he was a more introverted mm. person, but he was also available. He wasn't, uh, you know, exclusive or reclusive. Um, so uh, that's my th thought on how it's a power, how it can transform others. Mm. So I was just thinking deeper in, uh, on the same lines where if I'm not introverted, I'm draining. I'm just losing power. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if I'm not in touch with that, your presence, I'm just losing power. Mm -hmm. So just taking a moment, take that pause, just checking in with yourself itself will put you ahead of yourself where you were a moment before when you're not checking in with yourself. So are you saying that by being introverted you will feel you're ahead of your game? Ahead of your previous self. Mm -hmm. Earlier, when you're not introverted, when you're not self-aware, self-aware means like, uh, I mean, there is, the self-awareness is also used differently in different not selfish. Contexts. Yeah. Yeah. Selfish is one thing. Other one is self-aware means like uh, you're too self-conscious. You're feeling insecure and you're always conscious that you're insecure. And you're another going down the another <laughs> rabbit <spider> hole, <laughs> hole. <laughs> uh -huh. hamster wheel and rabbit holes. Rabbit holes, <laughs> a lot of them inside. <laughs> so we got to watch out for those things. 
So self-aware is like being detached and just observing, non-judgmental observing. You may be going through a rabbit hole, but just observe that is what's happening. Mm -hmm. Just by knowing that you're going through the rabbit hole itself will put you ahead of your previous self. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unless you know what's going on, you don't act. Right. Knowing what's happening itself is the big power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just then you have your hands on the wheel. Yeah. And on the brake. And then on the accelerator. This, yeah. And it, it's not doing it. You feel you're in control. Yeah. When you know yourself. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. So it is like you, you get your steering wheel back in hand. Also, I'd like to add that um, being introverted also allows you to tap in to um, a divine resource. And that could be different for any of you um, that are, sh you know, sharing this Zoom meeting with us. But that you have some reference for yourself of divinity, and to meditate on it, and to um, glean from that relationship or rapport. Um, of course, we meditate. Um, on God as the supreme being, as a, a point of light, conscient energy, just like me and you, we're this conscient presence, a, a, a point of conscient light. And we're part of a whole family of souls, of uh, radiant loving, beautiful, peaceful beings. The whole world is my family when I'm in that perspective. And to begin to be receptive to that subtle experience of God and to come and to sort of ask those questions that you know, what is this? How is this? How can I become in resonance with this quality of the divine? And I really feel in my meditations that that supreme consciousness, that supreme being will meet me halfway and lift me into that memory of my own divine self, my own functional pure, potent, alive, vibrant existence and that experience of being. And I think that's what's going to make me feel content mm -hmm. and full so that I'm available. And um, that's the greatest resource, I would say. Mm, yeah. And, and so uh, that's how I would call it put it in the category of superpower because, and you have to experiment for yourself. And uh, we'll have a meditation later um, at, uh, in a while to explore that. Um, but I, I would say, mm. um, so now that kind of brings us on how we can develop this power of introversion. Um, so what can I do? What uh, practice could I develop? How can I bring, how can I, you know, how can I make that real for me? How can mm. I begin to develop this power of introversion? Mm. So one of the things that comes to my mind is uh, getting to know the self by experiencing the self not just intellectualizing the self, understanding the self helps to get to experience, but you really understand yourself when you really experience yourself. So generally people think about meditation and stuff when things are not going good. <laughs> so at that point, when you just step back and then check in where you are, 
you feel that you're not in the right place and making a conscious effort how did it felt when this thing was not happening mm. itself will give you a new sense of presence for yourself new sense of who you are mm -hmm. right and it always helps me to see when all of this drama didn't happen how did it feel all of this uh, situation uh, situations uh, uh, and uh -huh. okay. and and then the sequence of events in life happened mm -hmm. and if i go back to my childhood days there are a lot of good beautiful pleasant childhood memories that most of us have so need not be childhood memories it could be the memories where you are totally present and you totally in, in touch with the nature for example because nat nature is always unconditional mm. right so sun is always shining everywhere the fresh air the trees when you are in tune with that flow of energy and you are carried away with that presence of that nature in your life and you feel that mm -hmm. so you know what it feels when your mind is not preoccupied with anything mm. and when you remember how it fe feels to be that and then you recognize that when you are born you're born that way and that so you're born wise you're almost. born peaceful you're born pleasant you're born as a being mm -hmm. and you're not born as a doer you're not born you you don't have to feel something you don't have to do something to feel mm -hmm. right so most as we get into this treadmill of action world we feel that oh i'm not worthy enough to feel because i didn't do mm -hmm. i don't deserve because i didn't do anything for that mm -hmm. to deserve mm -hmm. so you don't have to do to feel love mm -hmm. or feel loved right because you're born peaceful that takes time to digest that because we all personally i'm talking for myself that that wiring that you have to do something then only you deserve to experience something that association has to break rather than being you you are born peaceful you are born loving you, you when you mm -hmm. were at home mm -hmm. when you're born whole family was happy mm -hmm. looking at you in other words you are the source of love in the family mm -hmm. so what happened to that person that was you the original you but when you feel that then you know that that you are that mm -hmm. if i start to comprehend with my head it makes sense but uh, the power will only come when i feel understanding will helps to clear the clutter in my mind mm -hmm. but it won't give 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 me the full power okay of love only when i clear with with the clear understanding when i put myself and then start feeling that again that's where is a real power that's where is a real power of introversion getting in touch with our true self and and once i step into that then i can tap into and then reconnect that untampered presence of other person mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then it's not just in from the head i'm trying to recognize that i am a soul you are a soul but i feel that i am soul with S okay and i can hold the same feeling towards that other person that that person also holds what i'm feeling so it is not my head talking or making a connection it is my heart which is trying to make a connection because i am feeling love and i i recognize that that person also has that part i want to connect to that part so okay it sounds wonderful so what would be the steps to reach that heart space how can i begin to develop something baby steps every day to build up that that experience or inspirience of being a loving being mm. a loving presence mm. so what what are the steps for me i see it's like a workout okay. because uh, 
over a period of time, our head and heart has uh, caught up in this hamster wheel where it is caught up in this uh, triggered emotions and produce, tri- produce, produce. Yeah. And, and then as a result of that, you're feeling too. Your heart is also on the treadmill of uh, triggered emotions, triggered emotions. Somebody should say something nice about me. I should do something so that somebody, sh- I feel good about myself mm-hmm. and that experience that mm-hmm. I get from doing things, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I am on that treadmill. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So the first step is I have to slow down. Okay, step and, one, slow down. And okay. do nothing. <laughs> and do it quickly. Do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I literally said to myself, take time and for the next five minutes, I'm not going to do anything. There is one, uh, recently there is one nice song that came on. A song? A song on, which is a very popular song on YouTube also. It's like, I just going to sit and do nothing. <laughs> oh, I haven't heard it yet. <laughs> I look forward to it. I really like that song. It's like, I'm not going to do anything. Just sit down, right? Literally take that five, 10 minutes time, just do nothing. And then tell your mind, honey, don't do anything. Just chill out. And then tell your heart, like, forget it. Let it be. Mm-hmm. And then just step back. And then and then as you step back, you start that window to step out of that treadmill opens up or hamster wheel opens up. Mm-hmm. So, so step off the wheel. S- stepping off the wheel, how can I step off the wheel is do nothing. Do nothing. That is how you slow step down, off. do nothing. <laughs> Okay. Do nothing. And then just engage with whatever is naturally happening, like your breath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you feel your breath flowing in and out, start consciously paying attention to your breath and then just observe it is naturally happening. Mm -hmm. And then just observe and let, let that pleasantness continue. Let that pleasant experience continue. Mm -hmm. And then allow your body to be at peace and then do the same thing with your mind. Let your mind step back and then let the thoughts come and go and then don't engage, don't feed any more attention to that. And then it's okay. Tell the one who is paying attention, do nothing. (laughs) Whatever it comes, do nothing about it. Okay. Just sit back and let it come and go. It won't come back because you're not engaging. And perhaps if I may add journaling some people do well journaling death. just to get it out yes that yes. way you feel maybe a part of you is hearing hearing yes. it yes um and there could be the benefit of you know looking at it from a different perspective or just to get it out yeah yeah um and then it creates some space space definitely okay yeah okay G- definitely uh journaling do you do a brain dump and then so that your mind is not coming back with the same thought again and again like the hamster wheel yeah right. and okay. and if i don't put it down it may come back louder mm-hmm. it comes mm-hmm. back louder it means the the intensity of your thought is directly connected to the emotion connected to that thought Right? Okay. If I don't pay attention to something which matters to your mind mm-hmm. and you are ignoring, it comes back with a louder voice, means a li- little more anxiety behind that thought. <laughs> okay. So, so don't will, ignore. Just let it but, into the paper. But it's not really, what I'm hearing though, it is not really the time for exploring yeah. either. Just get it out. Get it out onto the paper. And don't try it. to figure it, <clears throat> don't yeah. try to resolve Solve. it. <clears throat> Just get it out. Okay. It out. All right. And and then have a conversation with that one who is coming up with new thoughts, saying that, honey, it's okay. We got it. Who's that? You mean yourself? Your mind. Okay, your mind. Thank <laughs> the you. mind who is coming back with thoughts okay. again and again, right? Okay. And then you get it off and then you, you acknowledge. The acknowledge part is a big part. Mm-hmm. And every time you acknowledge and then do this, try to celebrate. Oh, the I problem is you don't celebrate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You any right thing that you do, take a pause and celebrate. Mm-hmm. Like just by clearing and then getting it off, take a pause and celebrate. Chill out. I'm done. Cool. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Great. Thank you. Right? Just say thank you. Wonderful. Well done. And then your feeling starts happening. Celebration is the source of opening your heart. Oh, I like that. Can we write that quote? Celebration (laughs) 
is a source of opening your heart. Okay. And I do remember you saying festivities and that used to be a way. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so the whole idea of all of this practice is to get attention of your heart. Your heart will not listen easily. Mm. Your head, you can intellectualize and then put it into a track. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But to get attention of your heart, you got to use feelings to get attention of your heart. Mm -hmm. Ideas won't work there. Okay. So, but you need to get mind out of the way to get to the heart. Okay. So that's where understanding helps and all of these techniques helps. But as you're chilling out, engage your heart and start feeling. As I start feeling, celebrate how pleasant it is right now. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense because then you actually enjoy it. You're enjoying the quiet time and being, you enjoy yourself. Right. You enjoy um, the love and the peace and even some of the little traits, some of the little, you know, funny things you come up with or, yeah. um, or little insights. Um, hmm. so, so, so insights, a lot of beautiful insights will come, but let it out. Just write it. Write it down. Yeah. Because your head will start working. Yeah. It'll go, oh, now I got it. <laughs> then I'll do this and then I'll do that. <laughs> okay. And other thing which, uh, if you remember, there used to be a sister called Stella who used to stay here for a few months. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. I think she's in Australia somewhere. Mm -hmm. no, she, North, North Carolina. Oh, she's here? Yeah. Oh. So I remember when she was here, she made one, one statement and uh, she said, when you are in an experience, don't analyze. You kill the experience just by saying like, wow, mm -hmm. what a great experience. Mm -hmm. The minute you say you come out of the experience. Yeah. I said like, wow, that is a great point she made. <laughs> when you are in an experience, when you're feeling good, stay there. Don't even comment. Don't even comment. Say, oh, this feels good. If the minute you say this feels good, you're out of the feeling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. stay there hmm. okay stay there and continue and again it comes back to time how long are you in that place okay so maybe we could use that as a segue into meditation, a meditation. <laughs> so will you kindly guide us sure wonderful okay so just to complete that thought like mm -hmm. throughout the day 24 hours how long in what emotional state is my heart in? Okay. And how many times I took a time to celebrate? And if I continue to make my happiness a priority, mm -hmm. only when I get a feel of it, then I know like I want this to continue for the rest of the day. Okay. Right? Okay. And once you get a hang of it, so then you make that as a priority and like everything else work around it your thoughts, your okay. arguments, everything else. So, so, and then after a point, we start making that um, experiential time longer and longer I stay in that experiential place. Now the real introversion starts where we actually get in touch with the divine. We actually get in touch with God. We actually touch with our spiritual presence. Okay. Right. So on that note, we can go a little deeper. Thank you. Yeah. So we have a lot of time. Just relax. Thank you. And as you're relaxing, just observe the natural process of your breath.
Just observe all the sounds and be aware of your ambience, the lighting in the room, the sounds around, people in the room. And make yourself comfortable wherever you are. And let your breath be your guide. As you feel each breath, feel the sensations in your nostrils as you inhale. each breath carry that sense of pleasantness to every part of your body With each breath, your body is getting more relaxed and you feel at ease in your own body. I, the conscious being, am in this body and I am experiencing the pleasantness in my own body. With each breath, make yourself at ease. Let your mind slow down and let your mind engage with this experience. Let your mind stay with your breath. Let your mind stay in this body. Let your mind stay in this very room. Let your mind stay in this very moment. Let your mind be present for this beautiful experience. Relax your mind. in the present moment, in this peaceful presence.
engage your mind in this experience let your mind rest in the stillness of this very moment Give enough time to your mind, enough space for your mind. To experience that peace experience that peace in the stillness just allow this pleasant calmness to seep into your heart Let the attention of your mind naturally gravitate towards that pure peace, towards that pleasant experience. With every passing moment, you feel more and more at peace. Nothing more to do, just allow. Allow this pleasantness to grow within you. Stay absorbed. in that pure presence.
make that conscious contact with that pure presence of peace and sustain this with that inner silence a silent mind a peaceful heart for the rest of the evening and for the rest of the week for the rest of the month rest of the year and rest of our time on this earth Om Shanti Shanti Shanti